magnificent Shire horse has been carefully bred over centuries for its strength and size. It has long been an inspiring part of British military and equestrian history, dating back to the Middle Ages when knights needed strong mounts to carry them into battle. This story begins in June 1985, when the United States Army 3rd Infantry Regiment, Old Guard Platoon, formed in 1784 and which fought in every major campaign, made an inquiry to Mr. Thomas J. Smirt regarding the possible purchase of Shire horses to pull the caissons during formal state and military ceremonies to honor our nation's heroes in Arlington Cemetery. They were looking for a large, strong horse with gentle temperament for this demanding work. After becoming interested in the Shire and years before that fateful phone call, Mr. Smirt had often recalled the tearful cortege with a horse-drawn caisson carrying the body of the slain President John F. Kennedy, and he dreamed how wonderful it would be if Shires could serve in these somber rites. Mr. Smirt told the Army he would like to give them the horses required. Without yet seeing the Shires, they were skeptical of the offer. Later, an officer and two enlisted men from Fort Myer, Virginia, came to the Fox Valley Draft Horse Farms in McHenry County to inspect them, and immediately were taken by the Shires' impressive size, noble bearing, and docile disposition. During that visit, Mr. Smirt told the men why he had decided to give the Shires to the platoon. He said, in a way, I want to repay the nation for the freedom it has offered me and help promote the Shire breed, which at one time faced extinction. As a veteran of the army at the close of World War II, Mr. Smirt was doubly appreciative of those who died in combat, that his country, its allies, and the world would remain free. He felt a debt of gratitude to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. He believed deeply that the Shires would be the perfect horse for the solemn ceremonials performed in Arlington, where thousands of war dead, as well as former presidents, lie buried. After listening to his reasons and seeing the mighty Shires, the army delightfully accepted. The six horses perfectly matched are all from English stock. The Quezon platoon delegates returned to Washington and quickly spread word about the powerful and graceful animals which were to become theirs. Anticipation grew among members of the regiment as the weeks went by. Preparations for the 1500 mile round trip were extensive with particular emphasis on the care of the Shires during transport. Mr. Smirt rode in and drove the trailer truck himself during the 15-hour journey. The caravan arrived at Fort Myer just outside Washington on a Tuesday where it was greeted by a crowd of anxious soldiers who had eagerly been awaiting the arrival of what they had been told would be the newest and most regal members of the Corps. More and more people gathered as the horses were unloaded, exclaiming their surprise and awe at the nobility and gentleness of these marvelous animals. Mr. Smirt and his staff were afforded the gracious hospitality of the fort. Meanwhile, the horses were being groomed.
Rather than a simple exchange of formalities as the horses were to be handed over, Mr. Smirt learned that the army was so pleased by the splendid gift that a formal ceremony was scheduled on Thursday, October 31st at 10 a.m. Rehearsals were staged for participants, including the Fife and Drum Corps, Honor Guard, and of course, the horses. Next morning, the old guard, fife and drums, honor guard to the president, and color guard were out in colonial and modern uniform. Major General John L. Ballantyne, commander of the military district of Washington, would formally accept on behalf of the army. The pageantry, pomp, and seriousness of this occasion was emotionally overwhelming. Even the Shires seemed to sense something very special was happening as they were led onto the parade grounds. Heads high, hooves moving in the cool autumn air, sparkling white feathering flowing in the breeze. Normally, horses of the Quezon platoon have their legs close trimmed, but when the officers and men of the 3rd Infantry saw the Shires and the elegant touch and distinctive quality their feathering presented, they decided to change this regulation and not trim their legs ever. Colonel William R. Williamson, commander of the 3rd Infantry Battalion, made his remarks before the exchange. We're gathered here this morning to welcome six new members to the 3rd United States Infantry. These new members are Shire horses that are being donated by Mr. Thomas Smirt. Mr. Smirt has previously served in the United States Army. During the 1940s, he served as a soldier in the Philippine Islands and subsequently at Fort Lewis, Washington. Upon the completion of his service, he went on to become an eminently successful businessman. In addition to his business interests, he has also become a dedicated horseman and has currently dedicated his efforts to returning the Shire horse to a position of eminence that it once held in the United States. For the last several decades, he has been emotionally attached to the 3rd United States Infantry, and he has sought the opportunity to make this contribution to the ceremonies that the 3rd Infantry participates in. It's my real pleasure to welcome Mr. Smirt to this microphone and to Fort Myer. General Ballantyne, uh, troops of the Old Guard, it gives me great honor to present to you these Shire horses. It's one thing to give a gift, and the second thing, how it's accepted, and how does gift is accepted today. I words just cannot express what it means to me. Thank you.
Bert. I don't know how much uh, would be possible for the Army to thank you for your generosity for your patriotism today and passing these beautiful animals on to the dirty. And it's, uh, it's my privilege at this time to pass his harness to the commander of the 3rd Infantry, charge him to take proper care of these animals and see that they are employed in the service of our country. Confident that they will be a source of pride to the army for many years. We'll do that, sir. Thank you. Soldiers of the 3rd Infantry, special guests and friends, on this very special occasion, it's our honor on behalf of the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Marsh, and our Chief of Staff, General Wickham, and all soldiers of the United States Army to accept these six beautiful animals that will now join the caisson platoon of the 3rd Infantry, the Old Guard, and will from this point forward serve with that distinguished unit, providing service at Arlington National Cemetery to the innumerable funerals given with full military honors and the long-standing traditions of the United States Army. Additionally, they will serve at other special ceremonies and events and such state funerals as this organization is tasked to support. Mr. Smirk, I think I can speak for all of us here as well as the United States Army in trying to express our gratitude to you. We appreciate and thank you for your patriotism and for your generosity in donating these beautiful Shire horses to the United States Army. I have here a plaque uh, presented by the 3rd Infantry, and it's my honor to pass that on to you at this time. And again, it goes with our very best wishes and thanks for your wonderful contribution. Sir. Thank you for coming. The English Shire now more than ever is making its mark in America. From plow horse and workhorse, it has risen in esteem to show hitches and finally the epitome of recognition, drawing the heads of state and military dead in final tribute to their resting place in hallowed ground. It is work with dignity, honor, and grace. It may very well mark a grand resurgence of the English Shire and the start of a trend in American bread shires. Once again, we reach out our hands across the sea to the British, from whom we take our language, many of our customs, laws, and traditions, and today, a mutual interest in a great horse. We want the Shire to multiply and prosper as more and more people everywhere recognize its heritage and extraordinary traits, its huge proportions, its power, gentleness, and bearing. To what greater or more honorable task could we hope to have it aspire than this? This proud and stately animal is now and will forever be a permanent part of our tradition. To those who spent decades breeding these fine horses, to those who live to extend the domain of the Shire, to those who love them, our thanks and that of our nation.